live streaming. We're live now. Let's see what happens. Woo! All right. Everything looks like it's working. Looks like we're up. Uh, You want to do the intro, Brian? Yeah, we're up. All right, let's go. So, get some fire live Monday nights, 8.30. Me and Sam, the Brian and Sam team. No BS. (laughs) <laughs> you're just yeah. making this up as we go now we'll make it up as we go yeah i'd be interested to see your show notes mate yeah that's it so uh <laughs> tonight we have uh the slayer on pivot and slay jessica dennehy those of uh in the apex world know jess and uh we're excited to have her on and share some knowledge with us tonight and i'm excited a little to bit. be here oh my god i just saw your shirt that is the funniest yeah. shirt <laughs> jess pivot Pivot. This is where the name awesome. of the company came from. <laughs> that is freaking hilarious. Uh, I just saw the shirt. And Wiley says he can hear everyone. So, yes, oh we did good. get online here. Uh, wow, so working yeah, Wiley. Woo! Ooh, Wiley. And Greg's up here, too. So what's up, guys? All right. So we're blessed enough to have Jessica with us. So uh, there's a chat feed that I'm monitoring. If you guys have any questions for Jessica, uh, throw them in the chat and we'll, we'll put her on the spot because she is graciously agreed to uh to to go under the microscope tonight um <laughs> brian do you want to start mate or you want me to lead or what do you want to do yeah whatever we're we're gonna... figuring this out as we go aren't we so jess yeah. uh jess and we go back probably i don't know a year or two now we've known each other or something like that probably not even that long we met uh when you were running uh, the campaign that was uh i guess last election season and um i hooked her up with thomas and next thing you know, she's uh, an Apex executive, and I'm like, hey, where'd that, where'd that come from? And then she convinced me to go to MDM, basically said I didn't have a choice, and now here I am in Entrepreneurs, and been uh Texas five times in five months, all because of Jess. I keep telling you we're full, mate. You yeah. gotta leave, go on. Yeah. You're welcome, Texas. So, uh, so Texas has been blessed with the uh, Concrete Cowboy, now... Uh, you like that, right? Apex loud, stand out in the crowd. <laughs> Me and Alex. Definitely stand out. <laughs> Listen, if you're not having fun, what's the point, right? Yeah. So, uh, but in the meantime, Jessica is uh, basically taking over Apex. You know, she's uh, going to kick Ryan out soon, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, not uh, even. No, never. But um, no, Jess, is, uh, Jess has a wealth of knowledge. She keeps me in line constantly. She's constantly kicking me in the butt and getting my stuff straight. And I appreciate that because I need that. And uh, she's a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of passion for everything she does. And uh, she's uh, got this awesome book, Pivot and Slay, and a coaching program about pivoting and slaying. And uh, tell us what it's about, Jess. Yeah, so pivot, that's what I love to talk about the most because, as we all know, you have to adapt and evolve to survive. There's no other way to survive and be successful unless you're willing to constantly put yourself under the microscope, um, take a hard look at what's working, what's not, and adapt. So to me, a pivot is a purposeful turn you take when you need to overcome a hardship or a hurdle or something's blocking your way to get to where you need to be. And so you make a pivot and then you slay your goals and you find your freedom. And I'm all about the freedom. My coaching program is really focused on helping people who want to exit corporate life and go all in on their business or people who have already taken that leap, but are now struggling to ascend to the CEO role and delegate and really just embrace what it means to find their freedom within their company Um, to align with the tasks they love to do, what the the things they're most suited to do, to find time to balance the fun and the family and not just be in the hustle all the time, Um, freedom to take control of your day and kind of just find that real harmonious life that we're all looking for so that we can enjoy our success and you know, not just be grinding all the time. I think right now that's a big buzzword. Like everyone's hustling, everyone's grinding, right? And that's great. Like I'm all about make that money, do the work, put the work in, but you know, find yourself too and find that time to enjoy your life because we all know it goes fast. 100%. That's uh, what I've been working on myself. Um, You know, my we we ride at dawn that I've been doing. We're 112 days in today. And you know what? Every morning I get up and I go, see nature and I go watch the sunrise and 
um, it's kind of given me a new new perspective on life because I was just burned out. Like I just didn't want to do anything anymore. It's just like you get to call it the hamster in the wheel syndrome, where it's just every day is the same and constantly grinding and constantly just you know it's just you don't want to be there anymore. And uh, yeah, you need to stop. You need to pivot. You know, and you need I, to be in alignment with yourself. Yeah. I think a lot of us kind of lose ourselves in the moment. We're not being really present. We're just kind of like put our heads down and we're we're grinding and we don't really know what the end point is. We don't have our goals set in mind for what that looks like. Um, and it's, there's no end point. It's a journey. It's a continuous journey, Voice. but you got to get, you got to get your goals in line and keep moving forward towards those. And, you know, my book pivot and slay is really about my journey, my pivots, how I went from being a lawyer to being a business consultant and owning a barber shop and, just all of the crazy stuff that happened and the crazy risks I took. And um, I love to promote that in people because sometimes it's really hard taking the risk that you need to take to do what you love and what you're passionate about can be really stressful, really hard. And you need to like, you know, rein yourself in and have do that inner work. That way you are aligned with who you are and who you want to be. Um, and I believe that's important. So I kind of um, make that part of the coaching program is not just business, but how is the inner work going to help bring your best self to the table every single day? Because your business is partly you, right? So you show up there, show up with all your junk. So you got to get rid of the junk and you got to bring the best version of you so that you can have the most successful life and business and freedom and all that good stuff. There's there's a couple of questions come up in the chat, but I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna be a a, a rude host and, and butt in and ask my own question because it's right. it's fascinating to me. And sorry guys in the chat, I will get to yours, I promise. Um, Jessica, like you talk about the the pivot, the movement from corporate lawyer to um, coach and to salon owner, and, and but I know that you weren't specifically like satisfied as a corporate attorney. And that you wanted to make a move. But there's a lot of people I know that have that comfort of the, the corporate security blanket and stepping out in their own field and, and making their own pathway is so intimidating that they never take the step. What's something that, that you found uh, that helped you make that transition from the warm, safe, snuggly blanket of uh, a, a assured salary into, hey, you kill it, you eat it, and you get rich or you die trying? Like how, how, how do you even kick that off? man? Because that, that fascinates me. Yeah. So I, I by the way, it's cool if you want to be in that world. I'm not knocking that if that's where you're at and you're happy. Right. I was not happy anymore. That was my dream job. I hustled. I worked my butt off to get into this job working on, at, on Wall Street. That was my dream until one day it didn't satisfy me any more and that I need that I need that warm fuzzy feeling that makes me want to get up and leave my family and go do some crazy fun exciting challenging stuff and I wasn't feeling it anymore right. I wasn't challenged and I thought to myself man if I'm spending 60 hours here and not with my kids and not in my home and not doing things I love and traveling, I better love it. Mm -hmm. And I don't. And that is what made me leave. I felt like I was in a cage. I felt like I had to be stuck at my desk, whether I was working, I was more working more efficiently than everybody else. So I could have left at like 11 o'clock and still gotten more done than half the people in that office. Right. But I couldn't leave. I was caged there. I didn't have the time for the things I love. I didn't have control over my life. I was on trial. Like the courts were really ruling my, my week. And I just felt frustrated by that. And I just thought I could stay here and get a paycheck but and be miserable and feel like a caged animal. Or I could go to do something crazy and see if it works. And what's the worst that can happen? I just come back to the cage. That's the worst yeah, thing. Okay. I could just be the worst thing is I could just be stuck here back where I am <laughs> right now. And yeah, that I, motivated me to leave. And guys, this was not an easy decision. I know that in retrospect, I'm making it sound like, you know, obviously I'm going to leave. No, I was nine months pregnant with my first child when I signed a lease on my first barber shop. That's not ideal. That was scary as hell. I just bought a house. I was about to have a baby, you know, like 
I didn't have my savings anymore because I had a house. So that was a scary moment. It's not easy, but you can use any of those things as an excuse to stop you, or you can follow your passion and take a risk and know that the worst that can happen is you're just back where you were before in your corporate life doing your thing. I, I've told a lot of people that um, it's, it's the equivalent to uh, walking up to a pretty girl and ask, asking her out to dinner. You know, you can always go back to being by yourself and being miserable and being alone. If you don't make that jump, you'll never know. And, you know, you can always go back to a corporate salary. You can always find a home if you've got a strong resume. And I, man, to, to take that jump is scary. But knowing that, hey, there's, there's a six figure career behind me. If I do slip up, that's that, that's got to be something, man. And you think six figures sounds great till you make a bunch more. <laughs> and then you're like, damn, how did I think that was okay? Oh my God, right? Like, <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I'm, I'm all about freedom. And part of that is I had this tension, right? And they're like, oh, if you stay, I was 25 when I started at the Stock Exchange. So if I stayed till I was 65, I would have got a million dollar pension, right? But what I did was I left I cashed out that pension that whatever like little I had accrued and I made what I would have gotten at 65 from investments from that alone, I made it back, right? That's not including all the money I made doing my thing with my businesses. So, you know, you think like things sound great on paper, but when you, when you sit down and you kind of like map out the road that it's going to take to get there. Like you could do so much more mm -hmm. in that short period of time. Um, I think they just like dangle that in front of you it's, to yeah. entice you to, to build their business instead of building your own. It's the force of average where they make it seem like this is, you know, you get used to it. This is what everyone does. This is, this is the normal routine. This is, this is the way it's supposed to be. Until yeah. you start yeah. questioning that. And like I said, six it's... figures is great until you live in New York and, well, the problem, the problem is they don't teach you how to run a business or how to create a business. They teach you how to, you know, get into someone else's corporate world and, yeah. and keep going in that realm. So, so when you're taking the leap, it's not just um, a leap out of your comfort zone, a leap out of your financial comfort. It's a leap into something that there's not, no one teaching you about. So... Yeah. You got to figure that out on your own. And that's what I love about the consulting world, right, is I took 18 years to get to who you see today. And I mm -hmm. just posted about this so you guys could check it out on my social media at the Jessica Dennehy. But I basically list all the things I've done in 18 years that have gotten me to right now. And if you hire a coach or consultant, you can collapse that time and get where you're going way faster because mm -hmm. you have all of my mistakes and lessons yes. over 18 yes. years behind you. If I had someone then to tell me all this stuff, man, all the things I could do, right? Yeah, yeah don't don't even bring that up, man. We all yeah. we all cringe at that. We all yeah, lost we're, a bunch of years that uh, we're trying to get back now. <laughs> we're all Nobody about the, teaches you this think, stuff. Yeah, we've all made the same mistakes, right? You know, you, <laughs> so I gotta I gotta jump into the questions real quick. Um, Tyler's asked a good one. He says, and I I'm gonna pitch this to you, Jess, not to. Uh, us, but he says, what, what do you all do to treat yourself often and create some mental balance from work? I love that question. It's, I, I do a lot for myself often. And here's why I love vacation. Anyone that knows me knows what I spend my money on is traveling. I love to travel. We've seen but, that Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows yeah. that, right? Okay, cool. But, but I'm not going to live for those two, three trips a year. That's crazy. Like I have so many more weeks. What does that leave you? Like 49 weeks where you're not traveling. I got to enjoy every single day. So I make sure I carve out time to enjoy each day. Some days that's very little, right? Like some days that's just like I get my workout in, I get some alone time to journal and that's all I'm going to get. But most days it's, an hour or two towards the end of the day where I get to like go walk on the boardwalk with my kids or go hang out at the beach or go have a drink with a friend or go to dinner. Like I do something every day that makes me wind down and relax and enjoy my life because I'm not living for this much time. I'm living my life throughout the year, throughout the week, throughout the day. 
And I think that's something most people don't take into account. They kind of live for these bigger moments. And I think we have to do it on a micro level. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Time. Thank God it's Friday. Everyone lives for the weekend, right? And you're wasting the whole week when you say thank God it's Friday. Wake up, say thank God it's Monday. Thank God it's Tuesday because every day's a new gift and, and live each day. Because if you're, if you're just existing all week long just to get to Friday so that you could party for two days, like you're losing five days out of your week. Cause, and then, yeah. I used to you're like Brian, mindset, you can party you know, every day. Yeah, we can party every day. Yeah. <laughs> Put your cowboy hat on and rock out. I, I feel bad because he's like, hey, bro, you coming out? I'm like, dude, I'm asleep. <laughs> I don't know how how you'll do it. I don't know, but um, all right. So, hey, we try. <laughs> it, it's the pearl snaps and the cowboy hat that really set you apart, mate. That's it. But we have another question, and it's actually from your. Uh, um, I think this fellow's. I think this was your twin brother. Yeah, it's your twin brother that's asked this, uh, Brian. Mr. Greg Michaelman says, uh, this one's at Jessica. When would you consider starting a second business? Oh, I get this question often. It's such a good one. It's such a good one. I think a big mistake people make is they start to do too many things at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I am all about, by the way, multiple streams of income. I 100% stand by that. I think it's important to diversify especially coming from the Wall Street world, right? But, but people do it too soon. My opinion is when you have a business and you grow it and you learn how to implement your core values into the company and you hire based on those values. So you get to delegate to amazing humans that understand what you need and the company's running smoothly and you've got a lot off your plate you start to kind of take a step back and it's a slow progression, right? You're keeping your touch on the business, but you get to really ascend to a more of a 50,000 foot view. And I think once you have hit that viewpoint, you can then begin to consider expanding your horizons into something different. Before that, it's hard because you don't want to step back too fast because if you do that, the wheels fall off. Um, and you don't want to start to push your focus elsewhere until that machine is running really smoothly and effortlessly. And when I mean effortlessly, you ob obviously you put in the work to build the foundation, but you can, you can lean back and things don't fall apart for an extended period of time, right? I think that's the moment where you can start to think about other ways to make money, um, and other other streams of income coming in other businesses. That's what I did. So I got my barber shop up and running. Um, three years later, I opened a new another location. Two years later, I opened another location. And then when all three of those were in a good spot, I was like, all right, maybe I can turn my attention to something else. And that's what I've done with Pivot and Slay, you know, kind of delving into that new area. So that's my advice is wait until you've ascended the ranks and you can look at it from a higher view and you're not in the grind. If you're still in your business, there's no way you can move to something else. Yeah, you gotta amen. be working on the business, not in it. You wanna do everything halfway, if you're, you know, you better off doing one thing right and making your money than trying to do three things halfway and you know, not maximizing yeah. well, it. It's that litmus test. It's like, can you step away from your business for a month and come back with more money and more business or will the whole thing be burned down? And I think once you're at that point where you can step away, I think that maybe you can look at some other things, but like, like Jess, what did it take you five, six, seven years to get to that point? Yeah. Sorry. I'm distracted. Cause I feel like I got blurry somehow. You um, did. You, you you're out of there. focus. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I'm going to try to fix it while we talk. So we don't have to stop talking, but yeah, I would say about five years into Mad Men is when I really stopped being in the thick of it. And I kind of started to reel back. I didn't come every day i i went like once or twice a week maybe a little bit more i started to like try to see how it would work without me then i went on vacation i didn't like check in the whole time you know but i i had built that structure where i was delegating to the right people which took a little bit of time you know i made some mistakes in doing that um that i learned from but yeah i would say around like the five year mark is really where i was like all right all right i feel good about this so, but that could be different for everybody. You know, some people can get it up and running a little bit faster. Um, 
But type, that's what happened in my business. Type of business really matters too. Obviously, if it's a business where you're, you got to be hands on, or if it's a business where you're, you know, you're, you know, away from it. You know. I don't believe that there are businesses where that this can't work. I really don't. I feel like, and no matter what you're doing, you have to create a business where you are not the only person that can do something. Yeah. You know, because if what you're what you really want to be is the only person who can forge the brand ahead. You want to be that visionary leader that's always thinking about how the brand can expand and push forward. That's what your ultimate goal should be because if your goal is to work inside the business and you feel like you're the only person that can do XYZ, one is you're probably not being honest with yourself. <laughs> and two, yeah, you're not that special. Yeah, you'll never, ever get out if you don't start to realize that whatever you think you're the best at, you could probably find someone who's just as good and train them your way and make them make the money for you. Yeah, you can't remain the manager of your barbershop and then try and, you know, still manage a barbershop and then start your other business. You know, we talked about this uh, in Entrepreneurs this week when Jeff uh, came and talked about, you know, buying and selling businesses and whatnot. And if the business owner, if the the business can't survive without the owner. The business doesn't have any value. So, and they look at that when they're evaluating companies. When if that owner steps away, and that owner's in a critical role in that company, the value of that company goes with the owner, unless the company's set up to run on its own. So, when you're setting up your businesses, it's got to run on its own if you want to sell it at some point. Um, you got to get to that point huh. where, you know. So it was a conversation. If the business had. can't run without you, you have a job. Yeah, you have a job. Yeah. Most, you don't have a business. Most people have a job. You know, most businesses, if you look at it, you know, people tend to micromanage and, and they, they don't want to release control. And, you know, I'm guilty of myself, even just with my virtual assistant, you know, trying to release control. And, you know, you got to just cut the cords and, and give it away. And, and they're going to they're gonna mess stuff up. But then you guide them, you coach them, you train them, and they get it right. And now you get to the point where it's on cruise control somewhat. Still got to keep your eye. Yeah, you know, still got to keep your eye on the road, but... uh it drives itself a little bit if you get it if you do it right one of the hardest things to do is delegate it's one of yes. the hardest hardest things because most mm -hmm. of us are type a control freaks mm -hmm. and we think we're irreplaceable because <laughs> that's just the fun to think right like yeah no one can survive without me no they can but you need to take the time to really invest yourself in teaching them what you need them to know and the way that you want that things done. Without doing that, you'll never be able to fully trust and let go. And even mm -hmm. when you feel comfortable doing that, they're gonna mess up. They need to make it their own. They need to like put their spin on it. They need to have the autonomy and freedom to feel like they can make mistakes and learn uh, in their way on their time. And then once you allow that to happen and just accept that process, things turn around fast, but it's hard to get there. It is. The SOPs we you know, talk about all the time that, that so many businesses out of there don't have a standard operating procedure you know, in place for each task, each option. And it really takes time because you got to back up to do that. You got to stop what you're doing. We're in the grind. We're running, running, running. You have to stop, pivot, and uh, sit down and write down what you do every day. You know, and, and a lot of us, you know, in this business world, we just do, do, do. We don't even think about what we do. It just naturally happens. So when you stop and go, wait a minute, all right, how do I teach someone to do what I do every day? It's it's a it's a process. It really almost like a soul search and like, wow, like, wow, do, what do I do every day? And like, and how do I, you know, like, how do I explain that in a, you know. Dude, that's, that's literally the first thing I put my clients through. Yeah. The first thing is the time study. Yeah. Because, um, like, they, they've got this thing that only I can do it. Only I can do it. Well, if I don't get this right, nobody's going to get it right. And you have to break it to them. Like, dude, you're not that fucking special. I mean, yeah, you're special. You are. But everything you do can be taught and replicated to other people. Now, it may take it may take four or five uh, people to replace you. Uh, it may take four or five hires to fully do all the things you do. But you are not so special. You cannot be replaced. And that's the whole point of what we're trying to learn, you know? Yeah. Exactly. And so. and people don't want to stop because it takes them out of selling mode and revenue mm -hmm. mode. Yes. But if you don't, if you don't stop and take the time to do this, you will you're gonna miss out on revenue because you could expand your company. You could make more money if you had more people underneath you. So by not taking the time to do this and not pressing pause, you're actually missing out on the upside later. It's just so difficult, though. It, it's like understanding that you have to slow down before you go into a corner. 
Um, you don't want to slow down. You don't want to take your foot off the gas. Um, but a lot of guys, they're, they're, they're terrified to stop selling for, for long enough to correct course. And me, me included. I mean, I, I only just figured this out, what, 18 months ago? I, I did it the hard way for 39 years. <laughs> I, I much prefer this way. Yeah. It's it all- like that's the funny part, right? Is like when you actually let go and you start to let things kind of fall into place in a more natural aligned way, things start to seem easy and you get yeah. all weird. 100%. You're like, why is this easy? Why can I suddenly like what I had, a client, <laughs> What's going I had on? a client last week or two weeks ago say to me, like, oh, suddenly everyone's just closing. Like maybe my prices are off. I'm like, no, your prices are great. You've done all this work to lay the foundation and work on your sales pitches and like attract effortlessly the right people. And that's why you're closing because mm-hmm. you're now talking to a pool of people who are perfect for you. Yes, They already are sold by the time they get to you yes. because you've done all the work to attract them in that way. We get all freaked out when it gets easy. Like this should be hard. We should be mm-hmm. struggling. No, you shouldn't be struggling when you're struggling. That's because you're not doing it right. Yeah. You know, you're not like you're you're not walking uphill, but you could just make your life a lot easier if you took a second to think about it and 100%. plan it out. Hundred percent. It's your mindset. You know, when you're when you're enjoying the journey and you're not buried in the work and you're looking at the full journey, not just the work journey, the the personal life, the exercise, the eating right, the diet, and you're in, in a good headspace, good mindset in your head, that spreads out to your clients and to the people around you and in when you stop focusing on chasing a dollar, you start focusing on being happy and spreading some love out there and helping people, it, the, the, the shift comes around. And me, Sam, talk about it all the time. People keep reaching out to us, asking us for help and thanking us for the well, message. It's attraction. It's, really it's attraction. Awesome. It's yeah. awesome. You know, That's what we're doing right now. You know, we're, we're trying to you know? You know, give, give back to the world and help people that are stuck. Because there's so many people that you talk to that are just stuck in the grind and they're just hating life and it's just... Like there's more to life than being stuck in a grind, you know, it's uh... it's, it's funny because people are resistant to the fact that it could be their fault, but because they don't understand what it is about them that's creating that energy. Mm-hmm. They don't maybe they're not in touch with what energy really feels like. Um, but it's like you walk into a space of positive, uplifting people who want to see you win. That's a different room than people who are like skeptical or like, hey, you're faking it or you're not really that person. That's a different energy. So if you just for a minute put yourself in those two rooms, you're going to feel a certain way in one and you're going to feel a certain way in the other. Well, you also bring an energy to the room when you walk in, right? So you can be um, walking in a room where you're kind of like, I'm not feeling that I hate life. I'm stuck in the grind. I don't like this, right? Everyone else is going to be like, I'm staying away from that. When you when you bring a positive energy and mindset, people are going to be like wanting to get some of that. Like they're going to be like, yeah, give me that energy. Give me give me that happiness. Give me that light. Like shine your light over here. I need some light. Right. Exactly. Just Live in a light. Like, yeah, I got all light. this light. Yeah. Come get That's it. Great. Let's go. Yeah. They call it battery chargers. You know, people in your life charge your batteries. You know, I just got a full battery coming back from Texas. And I'm sure Sam did, too, because. You're surrounded oh, by this, yeah. this, this oh, yeah. light. It's just like yeah. literally like I come back with a full battery. And then it's funny after, you know, a month or so as we start getting near the next meetup, like you almost start losing some of your charge a little bit. And actually what I like is, you know, we've been doing some more events here and whatnot, but it's really an, really an energy thing. Like you get in that room and you're, and you're with so many people that want to see you succeed and are giving you every secret they know. Rather than trying to compete with you, they're trying to give you everything. How can I help you? Can we get on a exactly. call? What can I do to help you? It's it's really an amazing experience. And then, obviously, now, intentionally, I try and give like that. And it's just a process that keeps building. You know, make it a point when you walk in a room to light the room up, you know. And just yeah. sometimes if you're in a funk, take a deep breath. Go out and, you know, take a walk around the block. Look at the fresh air, you know. Go, go down by the water and watch the sunrise, watch the sunset, you know, and get oh, your head yeah. right. And then bring that back to the room with you, you know. Well, it comes down to confidence, right? Because when we're not really that confident, we're hoarding information and we're hoarding our techniques because we think we are replicable and replaceable. But the truth is, when you really own who you are and the value that you bring, no one can replace that because you bring a certain energy to that that no one else can. So once you realize that and you own that, 
you don't care about telling everybody what you do. Yeah, here's my program application. Go copy it because your program is still not going to be my program no matter mm -hmm. what you do. Even if you did the exact same stuff, exactly. you're not me. You're not bringing that to the table. So it's cool. Like, go ahead. Do your thing. And that's the great thing about Apex. And in the executive level, we meet every month. And I feel that exact way of like 30 days goes by and by the end of it, I'm like, thank God I'm going to Texas. I need that. I've been there five times in five months now already. It, it really is. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost like plugging back into your, yeah. to your energy. It's it like getting, and you know, the, 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 the drawback, I guess, uh, to apex as you go and you oftentimes end up feeling pretty average. Um, <laughs> but when, when you're in a, you're in a room full of people that literally wake up piss excellence every day. Like, yeah. you know what? I, it's okay being the average of this room. Um, yeah. You know, so uh, I, I often being the smartest guy in the room. You know, it's uh, they say you're the smartest person in the room. You're in the wrong room. So if we get in yeah, that room, and, and it's just the people that surround you, are just completely, completely amazing. I mean, and the no, great it's, thing it's is, the right we room. all bring something different to the table. So I might not be the smartest person in this category, mm -hmm. but I'm the smartest person in this category, or I have the mm -hmm. most experience in this category. So I think the most, the best boost of confidence is when you're in that room and you're admiring everybody and thinking how awesome they are. And then they walk over to you and they're like, I really need your help. And yeah. you're like, yes, yes. Huh? It's cool. like, the, wait, first yeah. the first time that, the first time that happens, man, what the hell? Yeah, it's crazy. Well, we talked about last week with Wiley. If you're, if you're 1% better or no 1% more than on one tiny topic, than someone else, you become the authority in that and you mm -hmm. can offer that 1% to them. So, you know, we always got to think about that, that we have, value of life experiences that no one else has experienced and you know you might have had similar stuff but you didn't have the exact thing and you might not have learned the lesson that life taught you i say yeah. all, all the time that uh, everything that happens in our life is a lesson right so you could either get upset by it and say why me or you could say hey wait a minute what's the lesson here what are we gonna learn from this what are we gonna do next time what are we gonna do to prevent this what are we gonna do better and if you start switching from hey why me why is this happening to me to Hey, what is the lesson here? Let me let me pull this lesson out and let me grow from it. Let me learn from it. Let me change from it. Let me pivot from it. Um, it changes your whole outlook, though. I mean, I was like, talk having a conversation with a friend of mine about this, and it's, you know, said stuff goes sideways in your life, and you know, right away it throws you, steals your joy, it throws you off the rails, that you're upset for days, weeks, whatever, and or you could just say, hey, all right, this happened, but now I learned this. I learned not to do this anymore. I learned next time I'm going to do this first, and uh, and you start building that machine. Rather than getting upset and losing your joy and, and just being cranky and miserable for a week to recover, uh, when you look at stuff as a lesson, it changes. You know, It's a whole new outlook. Yeah, and it, it, it's not perfect. Like You're still going to have those days where you're like, damn, I'm down. I'm not feeling it. Maybe oh, I'm yeah. not good Everyone enough. That. You know, and that's cool. Like I think, I think we need to embrace those moments, mm -hmm. but not the, the trick with mindset is that those moments don't stop happening. Mm -hmm. The time frame that you wallow in them just gets real short because yeah. you realize that it's not productive and you yeah. can pivot out faster, which is exactly. Good. It doesn't get easier. You just get better at it. You yep. get better at managing that shit. One, one thing that um, I've seen it pop up on a couple of memes around the, the last few days, but it's, it's something that um, I took on board a couple of years ago out of a book is that the, you can divide your day into sections. It doesn't have to be just, oh, something bad happened. I'm having a shitty day. Yeah. You just like, you, you close that section. All right. This morning wasn't perfect, but now it's lunchtime. We go, we got to crack it this afternoon. Yeah. And having the mindset to be able to compartmentalize and push stuff out like that and move forward. Um, they don't teach you that in school. No. You know, the number of times I say to my kids, buddy, it was, it was 30 seconds out of your whole day. Come on, yeah. let's, let's move forward. Let's get over it. But how many times in my 20s and in my 30s did a, a 30 second conversation ruin the mood for the rest of the afternoon? Yeah. 100%. And it's funny that you said no one teaches you that because I had a sales call today. And the person, I've never been asked this question before, but they were like, Do you have any coaching certifications? I'm like, Yeah, I have 18 years of business experience. Yeah. That's my mm -hmm. freaking certification. Yeah. I pulled myself out of the gutter like 10 times. I'm going to give you those techniques. Like, I don't need a certification because I'm. I've got experience. That's mm -hmm. my certification. And I thought it was funny because so what if you take a course like I'm a coach, here's my certification. Yeah, what does that mean? What does that yeah. mean? Yeah. If you get that, but you don't have any of the life experience, yeah. you've got nothing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like I don't take experience all day long over education mm -hmm. in that realm. Mm -hmm. 
you know, we've made all the mistakes so, so that other people don't have to. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, the, the years and money and all the stuff that we've lost through the, you know, through our process of life, you know, my grandfather used to have a line, it only costs a million dollars to get a million dollar education. Well, you know, we spent that million dollars in, in our lives of messing stuff up and doing the wrong things. And I can That's tell you true. what not to do. You know, we know yeah. we've all done this. You know, we've all I've, done stupid things. And a lot of it was not being taught right. I mean, I bought a ton of real estate and rental properties and I was so over leveraged that when the economy tanked, it was like a house of cards. And I was basically, you know, had a noose around my neck and it was, you know, brutal. And you know, to do it again, I wouldn't leverage it so hard. I'd buy them better. Um, there's a lot of different things I would do different. That's but, the only way you learn. But That's I learned the only it. Way you learn. You know, I got a great lesson out of yourself. that. You know, it was expensive. The only way you learn it is by over leveraging yourself. Yeah. Like when I when I had a car dealership, I had two million dollars in floor plan. That literally meant that I could run around the auctions and buy whatever the fuck I wanted, like anything. Yeah. And the problem with two million dollars in floor plan is you have two million dollars in interest payments. And $2 million in leverage payments. And I learned very, very quickly not to utilize all $2 million of it. Um, but until you've been there and looking at it, because everyone, you know, hey, man, leveraging $2 million isn't a really good idea on this particular deal. You know that. Yeah. But then there's this little monkey sits on your shoulder and goes, hey, you've got $2 million. Go buy that fucking Corvette. It'd be a right laugh. Yeah. <laughs> well, the only, thing, the only thing that shuts that monkey up is experience whether that's coming from you or whether it's coming from a mentor mm -hmm. the only thing so so you being able to go through losing what you lost through being over leveraged you've never been over leveraged since have you no so i, I say it all the time you can either make more money or you can you know pay less interest and whatnot and keep your keep your overhead down uh, mm -hmm. and that's that's good for business practice anyway overhead you, you know yeah sometimes you need that you know you need to take a loan to buy a piece of equipment to, to be more productive and as this you know you got to do that but to buy the new you know hundred thousand dollar you know trx pickup truck <laughs> no but uh you know you gotta treat do you, yourself do you once even, in a while but um you even have a truck you're not from texas do you have a truck me i, got, I don't drive a ridge line you got a, you got a you got a silverado a silverado you? silverado man i i thought all you boys from new york drove ridge lines no, man. no 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 that's all I, got. <laughs> <laughs> I don't you always got to get a Thomas uh, dig in there, you know? That truck Don't is worry. cool as hell, though. He took it a is, yeah. that. He wouldn't do a burnout, but it is really a cool truck. But, um, <laughs> but no, when you a lot of people do good in business. They start making money, and then they start buying toys, and they start buying new, you know, even if it's trucks for work. You buy all new brand, brand new vans. You buy brand new machinery. You buy brand new delivery trucks, all this other stuff. And then all of a sudden, the market, the economy backs up a little bit, and you're stuck with payments with no money coming in. And um, we were a victim of that twice in the air conditioning world. Um, third time's a charm right now. Um, you know, times are good. Money's coming in. You're making a fortune. You think you're on top of the world. And, you know, every 10 years or so, the economy decides to kick us in the ass. And if you're not ready for it, um, you know, you get your ass handed to you because it's hard to make but, those payments without money coming in. Dude, it's human nature to, to spend every penny we have right. getting to the places we want to go. And we often forget that one of the places we want to go is a fat retirement account. And you forget to feed your investment account. You're yeah. so busy feeding this monster that's become your business that eats and eats and eats and eats. And well, shit, yeah, the business needs a new truck. It now needs two new trucks. Now I need to get twenty thousand dollars worth of equipment over here. And all of a sudden, you're you've a hundred grand just gone like that. Like, where did that go? You know? Yeah. And it's because we forget to pay ourselves first. We forget that you can control the expansion of your bucket by just pulling a little bit out and putting it off to a bucket in the side and uh yeah, man, for the rainy day fund you know that's that's, I, that's, that's saying there because for a reason. dude it fucking rains it does you know rain. it's gonna it rain. rain you know it's gonna yeah. rain why yeah. not put a little bit of money every month into an umbrella fund yeah. Why, yeah. why not i mean yeah. it always rains so that's one problem i never had actually it's funny that you guys are saying this because i was really risk averse when i started my business and so because i was so risk averse I would like live like I was poor. We were making a bunch of money. And at the time, you know, my partner is my ex-husband, but at the time we were married and he's just like, can we, like, we got to enjoy this. And I'm like, no, what if something bad happens? Right. So like, it was funny because I think at the end of the day, we balanced each other out because he's just the totally opposite end of the spectrum. And I think we bought, we both brought each other to the, to the midline where I'm like, okay, now I know how to enjoy it, but also have like stuff for just in case, which got us through COVID. So good for that. Mm -hmm. um, 
but you know, and he's learned to dial it down a little tiny bit, but um, it's interesting that dynamics, like as you, as you live, I'm not the same person I was. And you mm, know, no way. That's and the we truth. Open. Yeah. I'm totally different. And that's kind of the, the story of the book is like, I went from this really cautious regulatory attorney. He's all about the details and, the the harm that can happen and you know covering cya you know like all that stuff to someone who's just like yes let's open the businesses let's go across seas let's spend the money let's do the things let's take the risks and it's such a huge transformation i think a lot of people feel that you know a lot of people understand what that's like that growth and that um fear (laughs) and the change well, I started doing that when I started buying properties. I was like, okay, this is great. This is the answer. Um, you know, I was leveraging one to buy another and leveraging that one to buy another. And I had this mm-hmm. house of cards going. And at one point, I was making like 10 grand a month off of rentals, free and clear. And I'm like, this is the answer. I can make 10 grand a month sitting home. Awesome. And that lasted for like maybe a year. And then all of a sudden, the economy stopped. You know, people stopped paying you know, their rent and I was doing evictions and it was, I get a new tenant and they pay a month in evictions and it just started spiraling out of control to the point where I'm like, you know, I had the equity, home equity loan in my house that I was using to pay the mortgages on that, which was a bad idea because I couldn't sell them. So I couldn't get out of them because the value had dropped and it was just like race to the bottom. So, uh, you know, I would do it different. Hard lesson. It's a hard lesson. It was some mm-hmm. bad times. It definitely, that uh, hurt. definitely yeah. weighed, uh, weighed a lot on, on me. And uh, I really think that's basically... You know, I lost my way. At point, one point, we talk about I was 305 pounds and, you know, drinking every day and eating every day and hating life. And it was after that because I had lost my wind. It took the wind out of my sails. And I thought I had the answer. And it kicked me so hard in the ass that I never got back up, you know. And I kind of just started, you know, going through the motions and, you know, just living every day like the hamster in the wheel, you know. And uh, it was, uh, you know, I guess, coming up before COVID. But then when COVID happened, it's like, whoa there's something else out here, you know, not going to work every day and realizing that I can go ride my bike in the morning and see the sunrise. And, you know, there's more to life than just getting up and going to work and multitasking and grinding. And, you know, everyone talks about, oh, the grind, the grind, the grind. No, we don't want to grind. Like, I mean, yeah, you got to put the work in, but you shouldn't be grinding yourself seven days a week, 20 hours a day, because it's just, you can't live like that. It's not sustainable and it's not enjoyable. That's why I started to Instagram more about my private life, which I hadn't previously done because I was like, this is possible guys. Yeah. Like I run three businesses and I still go to the beach like five days a week to run and meditate and do yoga and hang out with my kids and skateboard. Like it you makes you more productive. It. it makes you more this productive. This can happen. Yeah. And like there are days where I'm feeling low and I just take an hour, I drive over there, I walk, I just like take in the fresh air and get outside and center myself. And like these things work. Like if you live near the woods, you like to take a hike. Like it doesn't really take that much effort to get back to that like centered, real, like calm place. You just have to take a pause. Instead, people sit at their desks and they go for like, I'm going to push through. I'm going to no. You're not going to push through. All you're going to do is sit there and get nothing done. Like, mm-hmm. it's okay. Yeah. Like, take the time you need because that reset is going to catapult you. Yeah. It's the uh, bow and arrow. It pulls you back to, to launch forward. You know, it's uh, by the end of the day, when you've been grinding, it's, uh, you know, it's done. You know, uh, Ryan uh, jumped on my uh, live the other morning from the gym, and his message was do the hard things first. Get those hard things out of the way because as the day goes on and you're you know, you start getting worn out and you're not, don't want to do the hard things. And then when you're trying to do yeah. the hard things at the end of the day, you're burned out. Like, take that break, go walk around the block. Um, you know, I've take- always structured my day like that. Like yeah. if I, if I, I don't answer my phone until like, I'm not even joking till like noon because that is when I am the most focused and I just bang a ton of workout between yeah. like whatever I get up and start working till noon and then I feel good and I'm like, all right, I'll take the calls. I'll do the things. I'll do the Zooms. I'll do the podcast like in those later hours when I don't have to be as laser focused and all that stuff behind you. That's a good feeling. Totally, yeah, totally. <clears throat> yeah. I like nothing more than getting all of my shit knocked out by lunch. Um, my first podcast sessions are normally from one to two in the afternoon. And if I get in the office, I normally get to the office about 740. 
And if I can get some good couple of focus time blocks in the morning, I knock out more in four focused hours than I ever used to get done in a full fucking 10 hour day. Um, it, it's staying focused. It's keeping the phone off and it's, it's knocking it out. So people think I'm crazy too. I'm like, you're going to voicemail. Like, do not No, 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 no. This is, like, <laughs> Funny, rat, this is my up, time. Right? I just changed my voicemail today. I changed it to hang up and send me a text. <laughs> yeah, mine says that. You send me a text, yeah, because it's like yeah. I mean, because like yeah, don't leave me a voicemail. I'm, I'm, I don't listen to voicemail, that, honestly. Listen like, to it. Yeah, like I go to voicemails. I'm like, wow, that came in two days ago. I never heard it. Because if mm -hmm. you're not texting me, I'm not really dealing with you at this point. I mean, it's it's bad, but I mean that's kind of how we operate. I don't have time to go listen to a voicemail. You know, it's you know, quick text. Okay, boom, get what you need. But you can't let that distract you either. I mean, the biggest thing we all have to learn is this stupid phone that we carry mm -hmm. around needs to get put on a shelf somewhere, and you need to check it maybe once every two hours because you're constantly getting stopped and uh jeff was talking about this uh door um yeah dude, mine's on silent off. all the time yeah well, mine's on silent, silent but it's still vibrating on the desk and then you know you tell like, keep looking at it you lose your focus and and then that phone call you're in the middle of something and a phone call stops and now you look something up you, you know you look you mm -hmm. know you call someone else this and that, and then you go, where was I? And then it takes you 15 yeah, minutes, minutes to get back into the group. Like, yep. I have no sound, no vibration, nothing. Like, if I don't see it light up, you don't exist yet yeah. until I'm ready. <laughs> like, it's a con it's control. But it has to be. It has schedule. to be. It has, it has to, to be like I, that. I won't have freedom if I answer everybody in real time. In order yeah, how many, to really maintain how many people? my day, I have to, like, block you out for a little yeah. bit. Oh. That's just the reality. I just listened like, to a house that had about... I don't know, I had about 50 offers on it. I must have had at least 100 calls on it. I actually just put it on my voicemail, all the information, and I just stopped answering my phone. I couldn't. It's like I literally couldn't take a breath without answering the phone. And I was like, you know what? This works. Put the information on my voicemail, and if you if you call my voicemail now, you're going to get status updates on all my listings. That's why I don't have to make that phone call anymore. And it says, if, it, if this doesn't cover you, text me. And But you know how many times I don't get anything? Because they know the house is under contract already, and I'm not wasting my time with that phone call anymore. Um uh, that's really, pretty smart yeah it, it, you know, if you get my voicemail it tells you if you're calling about this house is under contract call about this house open house saturday if you're calling about this house it's right You're on my home. voicemail and it's been a great hack because now i i generally don't answer my phone that much um because it's just like i said it's such a distraction you know you know leave a message text me you know and you know if my if my voicemail didn't answer your call then text me and i'll get back to you but i'm yeah. in the middle of doing stuff and i'm trying to be productive and this phone keeps stopping my productivity yeah. But back back in the day you didn't you didn't have all this stuff. No. Um you know the, there's messenger, there's Instagram, there's um text messages and there's emails and that's in between phone calls and you just have to make a point of hey you know what I'm going to check this when I'm done. Yeah. And just phone is on silent it's face down on my desk and and that's it. If I check it I'll call you back if I no. if I don't check it you'll hear from me later you know. That's, I think that's really my worst spot is uh facebook like getting tagged on facebook and stuff because when i i sign on infrequently on purpose and by the time i'm on i have like 100 notifications i think i mm -hmm. miss half the shit that goes on on facebook unless yeah. it's in the messenger um because that's like more like text yeah. messaging but like people like i tagged you blah 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 i'm like i like mm -hmm. so did 100 other people like yeah. i don't know what you just did <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to keep up. It's so many, it's so many it different things that people want to talk to you on, which is great because everyone's comfortable on different stuff. But without really um, structuring your day, you will drown. You will drown yeah. in all of that. that is, so is. structure is important. 100%, 100%. You know, the, the, we all shoot from the hip, and I think that's maybe the entrepreneur life where you're just so used to putting fires out. Like, that's kind of how we live as entrepreneurs. Like, you know, a lot of times you're putting fires out. Obviously, you want to try and plan... So you don't have fires to put out, but it happens, you know, stuff goes sideways and, you know, um, so we never, I think we're so used to acting on the fly, you know, like as stuff comes, you know, you get that phone call, okay, boom, call this one, call that one, make this happen, or you go there, you do this, you do that, boom, okay, fire's out, okay, next fire, and, and we don't stop and, you know, actually plan our day, we don't actually put, you know, maybe, maybe that fire was caused because I didn't have a standard operating procedure that would have, you know, kept that from going on fire, you know, so stopping and, and getting everything structured and, and time blocking we talk about i'm, I'm really working on that because you, you yeah. lose so much time that the social media is hard because we try and contribute to social media you know i do my message every morning and then people comment on it all day long and all day long i'm you know saying hey how you doing comment you know try and you know keep the algorithms going and keep the keep the post active and it's nice to say hello to everybody but at the same time like i realized that like 
I just lost an hour just, you know, replying to people like, um, yeah. it's good, but it's bad. <laughs> it's like, Dude, you know. social media has spots on my calendar. Yeah. Like there is a spot from eight to eight fifteen every day where I got to make a post. Yeah. Well, it's got a spot on your calendar. I mean, you, you make a spot at, you make a post at six o'clock every morning. Yeah. But I, I try <clears throat> to post once in the morning, once when I get back to the office after lunch, um, which is again, anywhere from 12 to one thirty, depending on where I've been. And then I try and post one more at the end of the day. But a lot of days I just don't bother. I'm yeah. like, man, I'm tired. It's been a long day. I don't want to mess with this. And I, I you know, nine o'clock, that's my time. Um, nine to 10, that's about all the, all the time I get to myself. Yeah. And it's really hard to go and comment on people's posts, to wish everybody a happy birthday, yeah. to make three, two, three posts a day. Uh, two posts to Facebook, one Facebook Live, one post to a Facebook group, two posts to LinkedIn, add five people to your group. It's hard to do that shit consistently. It's a full-time you know? job in itself. It really Maybe is. we should hire people to do that. Well, actually, I got my virtual assistant's been doing some of my posting now, and uh, it's actually working. I was a little afraid of it, and um, you know, she's putting stuff out there, and she runs it past me. Some of the stuff she's not, and she's letting it fly, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I can live with that post. Yeah, you know, it's... Uh, She's resharing my journeys and stuff like that. So where I used to actually go is like put a house in contract and then I go make the flyer in contract, whatever, you know, she's doing that for me now. And I'm like, wow, yeah. that's awesome. Like I, that's one less thing I got to do. And then she, she makes the flyer and then she posts it and tags it and she's doing great with it. And it's, um, actually her mom just died today. So I feel bad for her. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's um Well I have I have something to say on this topic that might be a little controversial, but I'm gonna say it anyway. We like we like controversial. I know what we're all taught and there's definitely a lot of success in that. People in our group have had success doing exactly what you just outlined, right? But I'm a big believer in customizing what's worked for other people to what you need and what works best for you. For me, I have a very high end business, right? Like I'm not working in volume sales where I'm going to get a hundred leads a week. Like that's right. just not yeah. going to happen for my business. So I don't necessarily have to, or I don't, I choose not to follow that exact uh, mentality when it comes to social media, because that's not aligned with my business and that's okay like it does it work for some businesses yes does it work for a lot of businesses yes is it a good technique yes but to feel this pressure of doing it a certain way when maybe that isn't what's most aligned with you i i like people to know that it's okay mm. to customize it yeah. and not feel so pressured to follow that exact path like for me i post once a day in the morning that's what has been most successful to me when I post later, I'm not on my A game and those posts have sucked. So mm -hmm. I, instead of doing that, I've learned what works best for me, who am I, who I am as a person, but also what my business needs is to post in the morning, get everybody all wrapped up and then just do stories throughout the day, which take a lot less time. Stories, yeah, yeah, I'm getting used to that. Yep. Quick stories, right? easy. So, bang. Yep. Yeah. And I just post because my business account, my Instagram is a business account, but my Facebook is a personal account. I have to just copy and paste my one post onto LinkedIn, onto Instagram, onto Facebook. Later on, I go back in, I make sure I respond to everybody's comments and I make sure I get back to people like and, and, and interact with other people's stuff too. But I don't feel like this pressure to do it the way that necessarily other people do it. Because that's just not going to work for me. Like, I'm not in a business where I'm going to get all those leads right. every week, right? Because I have a high ticket item. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to know your business and then also know what works for you. Because three shitty posts. Hmm. isn't as good as one <laughs> really great post. I'm not saying, yeah. oh, Sam, I'm not saying your posts are shitty, by the way. Sorry. Yeah, that's no, I just, I'll, I'll just, I'll just write that down. Like for me, the other two posts were shitty. I just yeah, wasn't yeah. on my game. So that doesn't help my algorithm. What helped my algorithm was making one post that I put a lot of thought into and mm -hmm. then kind of stepping back and just like curating and cultivating whoever was, you know, responding to that. It's just what worked for me. But like some people are better at it and they can throw up a bunch of stuff well, and you, everything sticks. You can always tell who's not, you know, manning their own social media by the generic posts that go out. And uh, I'm a big believer in that social media is your own reality show and, and MTV doesn't play videos anymore because people love reality shows. I say it all the time. Mm -hmm. So 
that. People tune into your social media because they like that you're out at this restaurant. They like the sunrise in the morning. They like all that stuff, and they like the the passionate posts that we put time into that you know that are heartfelt and um, that's super important, obviously. But then I also feel like um, in my world, so like you know, if I got a house that I just put in under contract, I want to advertise that because you know, or I got a new listing. You know, yeah. so that, that one's more of a commercial that I'm kind of trying to let the VA do, whereas the heartfelt stuff, you can you can look on my wall and you know which is me and which so is not. So now you're going on my stories, look. Yeah. See? Yeah. Now, now, now I got stories. content. What about that? Yeah, content for the stories. <laughs> so, well, I think, I think knowing your business and knowing what your audience needs, because, you know, we all know the posts about business hardly get any love, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, you could post something about you and your family gets like a gazillion oh, likes, always, and then you yeah. post a business that's like crickets. Yeah. Um, so I think you just got to know, you got to know what's right for your specific business. And there's great, there's great things out there teaching you what works for other people. And that's a beautiful thing to have under your, in your arsenal of tools, but don't be afraid to make it yours either. That's mm -hmm. the point, right? Is like, you need to make it a part of who you are and what works for you. Your personality needs to come through your social media. Yeah. Cause that personality, that, that algorithm that like pattern works for other people but if your personality is not like theirs mm. it might not work for you so just take i think it's just to be open to you know making it yours and not having to necessarily follow someone else's path in the exact same format right yeah, just yeah. kind of like see what works like muscle test some stuff throw some stuff out there okay. is it the morning is it noon when everyone's at their desk that they interact more with you is it at night like I'm dead. This is late for me. Like I, I'm not creating some amazing post at ten o'clock at night. Yeah, That's no. just not gonna happen in my brain. Yeah. But if you're a night owl, that might be where your best work is. And if your audience knows that, they mm -hmm. can expect that from you at ten o'clock. They're gonna be there waiting for you to be consistent and post, yeah. and yeah. that will work for you. We tested and tested and tested, and um, my morning posts get the best response for posting because. You know, generally eight eight thirty people are rolling at the office and first thing they do is log on their computer and scroll facebook before they actually start work i'm going to get my coffee and stuff so we get a lot of reactions to the um you know eight o'clock to eight fifteen posts and then live videos um i found the best time for me to be live you know and we started in the morning we pushed it to 10 o'clock we pushed it to noon we tried it too best time for me to be live is about three thirty to four o'clock um yeah. in the afternoon because most people Again, they're starting that wind down at work. They're starting looking at the clock going, all right, well, I'm done with this and that. Maybe I can peek on Facebook a little bit and boom. Oh, well, there's Sammy's going live. So I would catch them on the cycle of work. They're just now starting their morning out while I'm having some coffee. So I'd catch them right at the coffee and then I'd catch them in the late afternoon lag time and it, it, it seemed to work. So, yeah. But One of the you have a, that, uh, that I've been doing actually that reposting I found I was losing a lot of time on that so now I'll create the content for it'll be the Facebook post but now to go to Instagram and LinkedIn or wherever else that's what I'm using the VA for so she's taking my post and, and pushing them out because there's a lot of it takes a lot of time to copy and paste copy and paste you know and you got to spend some time in a box as they say because Facebook realizes you're copying and pasting and they they supposedly won't push your message as far when it's a copy and paste message so theoretically you can just to, leave it open though yeah but it's still time and you know so i've been actually using the va to do that so it's still my content but she's putting it out on a different platform which yeah, is kind of cool good. uh i'm also scrubbing all my videos off of facebook and i'm putting them all on youtube so all my morning videos now are a series on youtube so you can go back which hillary who was watching hillary wants one of your shirts by the way uh she says she needs we all want one of those shirts i'll yeah. trade you a small business as well yeah <laughs> me oh yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, so um, Hillary's actually using that for content for my book as my morning rides. So mm -hmm. she's, uh, which so we're repurposing the content. So where I would have went and transcribed that, if you put it in YouTube, YouTube makes tra uh, transcribes it automatically, and she's pulling the content you, out as for my book, which is pretty cool. It's like multitasking. I give you some right? business advice. Can I give you some? Yeah, go ahead. Figure figure out what you want your YouTube channel to do. Figure out how you want to make money off it. What you want to do? Would you monetize it? And then go and uh, I'll shoot you a link to some software I've got, but go do some research on YouTube SEO and the keyword stuff. It's still simple enough to where you can kind of rank stuff um, fairly organically using descriptions, but do a little bit of research and figure out what you want your YouTube channel to be about. 
um, remember, is it entertaining? Is it engaging? Or is it educational? What problem am I solving with this channel? Um, yeah, I've kind of been and, using just basically to host, you know, videos for listings and whatnot. And uh, now it's been, you know, the ride videos, but it really doesn't have an organization, like you said. It needs, it needs to have more of a purpose. I've, I've neglected basically everything except for Facebook and Instagram for most of this time. You know. Well, if, if, if you go to YouTube right now and search College Station Realtor, um, which is my market, um, I'm, I'm fairly, fairly well all over that, um, all over that search term. Um, again, just because we took the time and SEO'd it. And like some of my videos have hundreds of views. Some of them have 10 or 20 views. But the point is they're all SEO and the people that do find it are finding it because they're looking for me. Mm -hmm. So it was it was worth the effort. So it's anyway. probably because your voice is so calming. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> A calming so. voice, That's it. dude. So talking of talking of completely off topic and calming voices, my podcast charted at uh, hit the top twenty for entrepreneurship in Portugal. Yeah. Portugal. What is the Portuguese doing listening to my show? That's interesting. <laughs> You're right. I have no You're idea. Calming in all languages, mm -hmm. Sam. I, I guessed. I you guess. Start narrating but, books and give Danny a run for his money, huh? Um, <laughs> you, you know, Hillary mentioned that. And plus, there's some audio books that I've listened to that have English narration and American narration. Mm. There's, I've, I've heard the same book with different voice actors. So. I would only listen to the British. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Danny, I'm not coming for your job, mate. I'm quite happy. <laughs> Dude, but then again, like I put out three podcast episodes a week. We don't get time to narrate an audio book. Yeah, no, there's you no know? time. Yeah. I listened to your um, podcast this morning, though. The one about the dog in the car. Yeah. The dog in the car. Yeah. I don't the, remember uh, that one. The oh, the woman. Yeah, yeah the God, woman. she was. Who lost her joy. Why, yeah. Why, why bother, man? Just yeah. toss the note away and be grateful yeah. that somebody cares about dogs and go on your way. Man. Well, you look at that, right? That's what I said before. We'll learn a lesson, right? What's the lesson? Yeah. Well, what's the don't lesson? Don't get here. excited. The lesson is that people care about your dog. You should be happy. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. <laughs> I, that, I I love that. I found such freedom with the podcast. I never thought people would listen, and now it's really. It took a long time. It took it took months of just like feeling I was shouting into a canyon. But now I I know I couldn't imagine not having one. It feels like I've had one forever. But yeah, when you you do this and two episodes a week, that workload uh, it never goes away, mate. Yeah, I don't know how to do it though. It's a, that that's the good stuff that makes everything work. Like the the. Getting on there, I look forward to listening to you, and and I, I know you're like me. You look forward to talking about it because it's fun to share what's in your head. Because mm -hmm. you know, otherwise we leave it all in there, it builds up and you know overflows. So we got to get it out. So uh, we get it out in our podcast, we get it out in our messages in the morning when I ride, and um, and then it's just fun to to just put that energy out there and and charge people's batteries up. It's uh, and those people will charge batteries and come back to you and and want to be around you because they're looking for more of a charge, and it's just fun how the cycle just just works it's really you know it's a neat thing i can't Before, think of a person more perfectly suited for a podcast than brian yeah. i'm gonna say it right now because he just loves he loves to be chatty so it's a perfect opportunity for him he's like I mean, the, the only one that could do 365 days of talking to himself without right. like a yeah. real guest on <laughs> i don't think i could do that honestly you, you should call it the brian lewis show just yeah, call it that it. the brian that's lewis or the life of Brian. I, I actually left Danny uh, on Friday and said, uh, we're starting a podcast. Let's go. So it's in the works. Mm. It's in the works. I, I love it. All right. I got one more question because I know we're over time now and I don't want to um, trespass too much on Jessica's time. <laughs> this is not a serious question, but I need a serious answer. Okay. If your name is Jessica and you are an Apex Executives, do you have to put pink in your hair? <laughs> That's funny. The, fun, the <laughs> best part about this, right, is I just showed up. Like, this was who I was before I even knew what Apex was. And Thomas was like, there's this thing called Apex. You want to come in two days? I'm like, two days? How am I going to get there in two days? Like, I got kids and stuff. He's like, just come. So I show up, and then there's another Jessica with pink hair. Like, what's the chance of that happening, right? <laughs> So not only that, but Danny was at the front of the room doing a dance party to mm. some like old school hip hop. I'm like, I'm home. Yeah. Like I felt like so alive. I'm like these are my people. Like, aliens. Like an alien <laughs> who had finally made it back to Mars. 
and was just there to listen to Ludacris and see like other Jessicas with pink hair. It was amazing. I love it. I think now the answer is yes. I think if you are named Jessica and you come in, you this is like now a rite of passage. It's like all oh, the guy I'm having to I'm having to grow a bigger beard so I'll fit in. You know? <laughs> I know every, I told um, Pedro every time I shave my beard and you know, I'm like, should I let it grow? Pedro would be you know would like this if I let it grow, you know. So I tell him every time I shave my beard, I think of you, you know. He's like, man, let it grow. He wants to just sell me some more beard products. I'll give you some beard oil for my barber shop. Oh, that's right, you got beard oil too. We got competing beard oil going on. Yeah. Now. No, I'm not competing with them. I don't like. <laughs> no. I don't want to mail out my stuff all over the country. I already tried that and it wasn't for me. Mm. But it's a good product, and you live close, so I'll just give it to you when I see you next time. <laughs> well, wonderful. We had a lot of action in the chat yes. room. Um, I want to thank yeah, everybody. Yeah, Chris we did. What did they say? The what are they saying? Matt, Matty K is going to tag you in everything, Jessica, just so like just to irritate you, which okay, doesn't surprise you. me at all. He's allowed. He's allowed. Um, he, I actually, he called me the other day. He's like, "This is not a scheduled phone call." I'm so honored that you answered. I'm like, "You should be honored because I wouldn't answer for many people. That's for sure." I constantly slide in her DM and text, and then she calls me. Up you don't call though. Me. You're respectful about that. No, I try and just. That's what I like about text so much is that you can answer it when you can answer it. You know, or you know, yeah. It's like, I don't like to call people anymore, my, my busy people, friends, because, like, I don't like being called. I mean, I, I like to talk to people, but if I'm in the middle of work and my phone rings, and I'm like, I don't have time for this, and I feel bad in an answer, and I'm like, you know, should I answer this? You know, so just text me quick, and I'm like, all right, good, yes, tomorrow, sounds good, 8 o'clock, gone, you know. If the, my name pops up on your phone as a phone call, like, the world's probably... Yeah, you're on the side of the road with a flat tire or something, i got to come it down. It must yeah. be serious. <laughs> I, I'm answering it. I'll answer yeah, it. I'll answer, I'll answer it. it. But what else? What else? Tell me the good stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh, you can't see these comments, huh? I can't. Um, Let's see. On my side here, we got uh, Benny jumped in. Chris Whitehead jumped in. Pivot every day. Yay. Chris said with some of the sharpest knives in the drawer. Love you guys. Uh, that's good. I love Tyler it. says there's so many glorious accents in one room. <laughs> oh, that must be Tyler from mm -hmm. uh, Tyler Dozier. How do you say his last name? How do you say his last name? I, however you want. I mean, he's not going to. Is gonna, it like French? Like Dozier? <laughs> Do, Dozier? I think, yeah, I think that's what we should call him from now on. I do too. Tyler Dozier. He yeah. loves accents, that guy. That's what he said. So many glorious accents in one room. Coffee, 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 coffee. coffee. Lawn Guy Land. <laughs> what? So Long Island, it's lawn, like grass, guy, uh -huh. and then land. Lawn Guy Land. Yeah. Lawn, lawn Guy Land. All right. That's yeah. Our, that's what okay. it says we say it. I don't think we say it like that, but that's how they... I think that's Sam cool. has the best accent out of all of us. It's so... Uh, yeah. You don't shine a light to his. Well, well, bacon. I can say Jamaican uh, bacon because all you got to say is beer can. <laughs> that's it, like a like a can of beer. But that's the only, I think that's the only uh, one I've got. You all would not understand my native accent. Um, I should get my brother on the show one day. You would uh, you would freak out. My uh, this is from twenty one years in America, so it's only it's only slightly English. Um, I do get teased about sounding American when I go home. Yeah. Nah, um, really? some Irish friends like that that it's like are they speak in English I think they are wait what especially when they start drinking it's yeah like, my friends used to say I'd wait, wait till he starts drinking you won't understand him yeah. and yeah they were right but they've not said that in a few yeah, years right. now, so. well, I definitely cool. haven't seen you drunk yet so that'll, you that'll be my gonna, eight four years for, four years soon? yeah four, four years and ever so many months now yeah I've been I've been sober a while so. alright I love that <laughs> that is not my identity though um <laughs> trying to i try not to bring it up and then it's like everybody like they'll clap and you're like wait no i just didn't have a drink like it's not that big of a deal but apparently it is no it's important so, no because a lot of people struggle with it and we were having a conversation that we've seen some people in our lives that we see going down that path because we mm -hmm. were down that path i was drinking way too much at one point and you know i still probably drink more than i should but um you know, you see the people that are drinking eight drinks every time they go out, ten drinks every time. That's not normal. You know, you go out, you have one or two drinks, three drinks maybe. Okay. When you're having eight drinks at a sitting every time you go out, like, you really got to start thinking about this. Like, you know, it's, you know, it's not really just going out and having a drink. It's going out and pounding, you know. So, you know, we've come across I don't know. I don't, think, I don't think it's identifying as it. My personal opinion, because I, I think a lot of people feel like that about like single mom, divorced. Like that's not my identity, but that is part of what's brought me to where I'm at right now. And I'm fucking proud of that. Like, mm. 
I'm not saying, oh, I'm proud I'm divorced. I'm proud that I, I like went through that and came out on the other side. It's almost like a badge of honor for me to be like, yeah, I went through this shit. Yeah. But it's not not my identity. But well, I think it is something to clap about. Like, yeah, we. It gives you it. hope, you know. So I'm when proud. you were going through that struggle and you life sucked, and you know, then you see someone like you, and you go, wow. She went through it, and look where she is. I can do this, too. Mm-hmm. And same, you know, someone is struggling yeah. with drinking. Hey, look, Sam went through this. He lost everything. Yeah. And look where he is today. Started over and from scratch, and you can you know, do I, it, too. You know, so. I, was, I was 280, 285. You were 300 pounds. 305 um, pounds I hit, and I said, enough's enough. I can't breathe when I, I want, my shoes. I want the fucking 300-pound alcoholic business owner in his 30s to look at me and go, shit, I need some help from this dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. And I just reach out and, and help him along. You know, that's well, what I'm looking at. It's so much easier to be like, oh, their problems aren't as big as mine, so I can't overcome it. That's why I haven't done it, because my problem's bigger. Their problem wasn't. No. Because I could tell you right now, you want to compare a divorce to, like, drinking or divorce to like, whatever. Sure. If you may compare those two things, maybe it doesn't sound as terrible. But in my life, in my journey, that was a low moment. And I had some really low depressed moments of where I felt helpless and tortured and, Mm -hmm. you know, like at the end of my road. So even though when we compare it now in the aftermath, you don't feel like that as low as where you are in my life, it was. And I think like, that's just an excuse we use to tell ourselves it's okay that you didn't do anything with yourself. It's okay. You didn't get over it. Because you're like in a worse place than someone else. No, like you need to see these stories and hear these stories and be inspired to take your journey and your hardship and change it. You know, you can do that no matter how difficult whatever you were going through was. I think it's our duty at this point to, to share. I mean, I, I figure I lost 10 years of my life just hamster in a wheel. Just easily. Yeah. Easily. Just, yeah, same. You know, 10 years of productivity when I just got in my funk and. I was very successful younger in life, um, always wheeling and dealing and, you know, knocked the house down when I was 26 years old, built a brand new house with a dollar and a dream. I put the shell of the house up and then called the bank up for a refi. They did a drive-by. The house had nothing inside. It was just the shell. And they gave me 200 grand. I finished the house. Like, it was All a right. dollar a dream. I had no idea how I was going to do it, and I did it. And, you know, 26 years old, 26-year-old kids now are still living with their parents, you know, so... You know, but I was very successful early. Then I got into buying real estate when the market crashed and I lost everything. I just lost my way. I really did. And I said, that's when the eating and the drinking and the depression and, you know, and then again, having kids and the family stresses. And it's like, all right, you know, I thought we you were know, basically on a retirement plan here, you know, and now mm-hmm. here I am, you know, giant bills trying to get out from underneath everything. And then, you know, more kids coming and more mouths to feed. And it just, it really just starts strangling you to the point where you're just like, let me just go drink and, you know, numb the pain. <laughs> The shocking thing is, though, like I don't, I don't mean to, uh, I don't mean to minimize your hardship here, but you're not special. No, like you're not. It's everybody's we, in the like, same journey together. It's the same fucking pattern. You got the same journey. It, it uh, runs. You know, Tom is on the same journey. My Chloe on the same journey. Drew yeah, made the same get, journey. You get it's, good at what you do. You get comfortable at it. You get your feet under the table. You go to a few more meetings, a few extra lunches here and there. Margaritas start coming yeah. in, and then before you know it. Like you're committing all this time to your business, your marriage is in fucking pieces. Yeah. You're drinking more and more, and it, the, you focus on the business, and that business just eats you alive. And like, I thought I was the only one, yeah. and you're not. You can sit in a room full of people um, in Apex, and half of them have been through it, and half of them are going through it, yeah. and every single one of them will help yeah. you. Uh, you know. And that's the thing. You got to stop comparing yourself and being like, that's why my mind's worse. Mine's no. different. No. Nope. It's nope. not. Nope. It's not different. You can do it too. None of the grown ups know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I thought I would have life figured out by now. You know? Nope. You know so, we never nope. had these people in our lives, though, that, you know, no, that, we didn't. that had these examples. You know, I always had a, a tight circle of entrepreneur type people. I kind of just gravitate to that. And we've always, you know, but no one, we were all kind of figured it out together. We never had the mm-hmm. mentorship of someone that had been through it, had figured it out, and had, you know, basically say, listen, you idiot, stop. You know, mm-hmm. there's more to life than going to lunch and getting drunk and then going after work and going to meetings and getting drunk and eating your face off and, 
you know, but it, thank it God it's Friday so sometimes. I can go out, you know, to dinner again and whatnot. You it, know? it takes it takes tough love sometimes, yeah, man. It, does, it takes it. somebody standing up there and saying, you know what, sort your fucking life out. You know, you know, you, you takes watch time. you going through it and we're like, you know, we're afraid to say something. It's like, please, I tell Jess all the time, kick me in the ass as hard as you can when I need it. You I know, was just going to say, Brian yeah. gets a lot of tough love from me. It. He'll I be like, it. blah, blah, blah. I'm like, shut up. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I love, I love the push. And then he because... keeps talking to me. I remember one time I said to Thomas, why does he keep talking to me? Like, I, he's not sick of me yet, giving him, like, this tough love. I, I love and... realness. because I'm, I'm going to take that you know? sound bite. I'm going to take that sound bite of you saying shut up, and I'm just going to turn it into a sound bite and just keep texting him. Out. <laughs> it should be Brian's ringtone. Yeah. Shut up. Yes. Yeah. Shut up. Stop, yeah. you know, All right. It's, uh, it's important I, to I have don't... those people in your life that are real with you. You know, you got to be real with your friends. You know, it's... I'm going to be real with you. I don't oh, want to yeah. stay on. I don't want to stay here all night. Yeah, um, you'll certainly don't. It's quarter to 10 I'm in New York. That, guys. I'm a granny. Yes. I am right behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Jessica, so, thank you. For coming on um awesome. and brian thank you for hosting jessica before we leave for those uh, that are watching that don't already know uh where can the guys find your socials and where can they follow along with you at social media i am at the jessica dennehy that's on instagram and facebook and if you're interested in learning more about me or applying for my coaching program or buying my book you can find it all on pivot and slay.com is that where those t-shirts are available also not yet. We're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, you gotta get those. Sell yeah, I'll buy one of those. That'll be fun. Woo! Thank you. All right, that's it from us. Thank Good you so stuff. much Good to stuff. Jessica. Thank you, O'Brien. We appreciate and, uh, you. I appreciate you both. And uh, love yeah, we'll be, here. Yeah. Fun. We'll, be here this, we'll be here next week with another Apexer who is yet to be named. We got like a list like yeah, that at the meet. Like, everybody wants now, to come so. do this. So this yes. We will see you all next week. Thank all you right, so everyone. much for joining. And uh, thank you, Jessica. Thank I'll you, see guys. You soon. Good night. Bye, everyone. God bless. Bye, guys.